Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Math 301, Introduction to Combinatorics. And this video is about how to use SAGE to evaluate recurrence relations. So you remember that a recurrence relation gives a way, if you have a starting point of some values, you can use that recurrence relation to find an infinite sequence of values. And it can be quite helpful to have a computer program evaluate your recurrence relation. So today uh, we're going to be doing three things on SAGE. I first want to show you how to set up a recurrence definition on SAGE and use that to find some of the values in the sequence. Then we're going to set up the closed form formula for a recurrence relation. And then we're going to see how to go from the recurrence relation to the closed form formula. So let's start with the Fibonacci sequence in section 6.1. Remember, this is the sequence that starts 1, 1, 2, 3, 5. And after the two initial values of 1, each value in the sequence is the sum of the previous two. So here we're going to define Fibo of x. If x is 1, we will return 1. If x is 2, we'll return 1. Otherwise, we're going to return the sum of the previous two values in the sequence. When you do this, be very careful about how much you indent the lines. It turns out the indentation is very important. Okay, so let's print the first several values of the Fibonacci sequence by printing Fibo of n for n from 1 to 10. And so uh, notice what we have here. So we start 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55. So those are the first 10 Fibonacci numbers. Okay, what about the 100th Fibonacci number? Um, all right, seems to be kind of um, not working. Let's, let's, um, let's just try doing that again. Maybe if I click this box lots of times, it'll go faster. I don't know. Do you think this is going to work or not? It's certainly taking a while. Let's think about why it's taking a while. In order to figure out the Fibonacci value at index 100, we have to find the one for 99 and 98. And to find 99, we'd have to find 98 and 97. And so there's a lot of uh, steps and data that we have to keep track in order to figure this, this out. You can still see this is still thinking. Now, if you're a computer science expert, you probably know there's, a, there's probably a better way of setting this up so that we um, maybe save two values at a time and then compute the next ones. We're not being as sophisticated as we could be. On the other hand, 100 isn't that big a number to start with. So maybe we need a different way of doing that. Let's, let's stop, stop that. So let's instead try to set up the closed form formula for the Fibonacci numbers. So if you look in the book, you can see that that formula involves the square root of five. Let's just check that the, we've got the right formula for the square root of five. Yeah, that's about, about 2.23. And that formula involves the golden ratio, which is 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2, and its conjugate, which is 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2. And the formula in the book is that in order to find the nth Fibonacci number, you should take the nth power of alpha, subtract the nth power of bar alpha, and then multiply by 1 over the square root of 5. Okay, so let's let's make that definition and then find um, the 100th Fibonacci number. And notice how immediate it is. Um, the computer can do this uh, really, really quickly. Okay, so how did we find that closed form formula for the Fibonacci numbers? Well, remember that in, in this case, this is gonna be a recursive relation of depth or degree two. And so there's a general formula for the solutions to that, we need to find the roots R1 and R2 of the characteristic polynomial, raise them to the nth power, and then there should be constants A and B so that 
um, that the nth Fibonacci number equals this. So how can we do that in Sage? We need to start by defining a polynomial ring. This is just a way of telling the computer that we want to be able to uh, deal with um, functions in one variable. And the characteristic polynomial, the relation that fn is fn minus one plus fn minus two tells us that we're looking for something that looks like x squared is x plus one. And so our characteristic polynomial is x squared minus x minus one. So let's define that polynomial and let's find its roots. Great, okay, so notice what these roots are. Um, if we pull the one halves out, here we have minus the square root of five plus one over two. And here we have um, plus the square root of five plus one over two. Now there's a lot of syntax here that may not be so clear right off the bat. First of all, this extra one here tells you that this is a root with multiplicity one. That's important because in, we need the roots to be distinct from each other in order to um, apply this formula. So these roots are, we have two different roots here and that we see that by these multiplicity ones here. The other thing that uh, I was a little confused about for a while is when they say minus a half times square root of five, it turns out that they're putting that square root of five is not in the denominator. You kind of can imagine parentheses around the one half. And so this is, this is minus one half and parentheses times the square root of five. So that's, that's what they mean by that. Okay, so those are gonna be the roots. We'll call them R1 and R2. Now, how do you find the coefficients? In order to do that, we're gonna define the variables A and B. And we wanna set, we wanna look at the first two values of the Fibonacci sequence, which are one and one. And we wanna solve that A times alpha to the first plus B times bar alpha to the first should be one and a times alpha squared plus b times alpha squared should be one. So in other words, what we're trying to do is make sure that a and b work so that this formula matches the first two values of the Fibonacci sequence. And once it matches the first two values, the recursive relation tells us that all the other values have to match also. So we wanna solve the, these, we have two equations and two variables we know what alpha and alpha bar are, so we wanna solve for capital A and capital B. And you can do that on Sage by setting up these two equations. You need the doubles equals here. And so now we wanna solve these equations for A and B. And we find out that A is one fifth times the square root of five. Notice that's the same as one over the square root of five. And B is minus one fifth times the square root of five. And then just to, just to make a, a quick check, I could say, okay, what does that mean? That means that they're saying that, that the third Fibonacci number should be alpha cubed times A, which is the same as S over five, minus alpha bar cubed times, um, or, um, or plus alpha bar cubed times B and B is minus S over five. So we're just gonna make sure that um, we should get the third Fibonacci number when we do this, that will just be a way of checking whether our work is correct. And um, we evaluate that, we get the answer two. So that that looks great. Okay, so that that is how, um, that's how we can do some things involved with Recurse, recurrence relations. And so just to reinforce those ideas, let's now do a different recurrence relation. This one involves the wasps that are circling around my back door. Uh, they are inside the, the roof and we've been trying to get rid of them all summer long. And so we're gonna define a recurrence relation. So we're gonna define a sequence of values, wasp n, where if n is one, then we'll return one. So we started with one wasp. Maybe that's not so realistic, but it's okay. For n equals two, we're gonna have one, return one, one wasp. And otherwise we're gonna return 
that the amount of wasps at time n is the sum of the amount at time n minus one plus 20 times the amount that we're at time n plus two, n minus two. And so let's see how the growth of the wasp colony works. So here are the first um, 10 values of this sequence. Notice that the number of wasps is getting big really, really fast. Uh, let's see if we can figure out the 100th wasp number this way. Uh, well, we've got the first 10. Then just think about it for a little while. All right, so again, this doesn't really seem to be working. So there'd probably be a better way of setting that up. But um, maybe instead, we'll just see if we can find the close form formula for the WASP numbers. So this sequence doesn't have a closed form formula in the book. So we're going to have to do it by hand. Uh, since this recurrence relation, since Fn involves Fn minus 1 and Fn minus 2, this is a degree 2 recurrence relation. And so we're going to look for a solution which looks like a constant times uh, r1 to the n uh, plus a constant times r2 to the n. I think later on I'm ca calling these constants little a and little b rather than big A and big B. And we need to find these roots r1 and r2 of the characteristic polynomial. So what is a characteristic polynomial? It's x squared minus x minus 20. And so let's find the roots of that. Oops, I'm going to comment this out. All right, so let's find the roots. Let's find the roots of that. OK, so we have one root, r1 is 5, and the other root, r2, is minus 4. Really easy roots. It's not a coincidence I actually picked this recurrence relation in order to have those integer roots. OK, so our roots are 5 and minus 4. Um, so remember what that means is that what we're looking for is that wasp, wasp n should be a times uh, 5 to the n plus b times minus 4 to the n. And now we want to find little a and little b. We're going to define variables a and b. And here are the equations we get by noticing that this sequence started with the values 1 and 1. So that means that when we plug in n equals 1, we get little a times 5 plus b times minus 4 should be 1. And little a times 5 squared plus b times minus 4 squared should also be 1. And so we're going to solve that equation for little a and little b. And the constants are 1 ninth and minus 1 ninth. And then we can make a check. Oh, I've forgotten what the values of this wasp sequence were. So let's just check. These were the first 10 values of the wasp sequence. And notice that when we made the check, we got 21, which is indeed the third, the third one on that list. OK, so you should definitely be using SAGE to any time you need to find values in a recurrence relation sequence. And it's also a great way of finding the characteristic or using the characteristic polynomial to find the roots and to solve for the coefficients for the roots. OK, see you next time.